Hi there, I'm Justin Wissenant from Montana Instruments, and today I'm going to teach you how to cool down your Gen 3 Krause station. The cool down process is fully automated, and there are several options that allow you to optimize the cool down for your environment and your experiment. This system has an Agile Temperature Sample Mount, or ATSM. The ATSM allows for responsive thermal control and great temperature stability. To get started, make sure you are on the main operate view for the sample chamber and have the platform temperature channel selected. After you've loaded your sample and put the lid on the sample chamber, set the platform target temperature to your desired setting. The target temperature can be adjusted at any time during the cool down process. For best performance of the ATSM, set the platform target temperature to zero to get maximum cooling power. The platform target will be left at zero for the duration of the cool down and we will use the ATSM to precisely control the sample temperature. The ATSM is fully controllable by the user manually and is not automatically controlled by the system. You can apply heat manually to the ATSM by setting the heater power manually, or you can set a target temperature and enable the PID controller to hold the ATSM at a temperature set point. When the PID controller is enabled, you will see a blue dot next to the ATSM label at the top of the screen. This is to show you at a glance whether or not the ATSM PID controller is enabled. Set your desired target temperature for the ATSM, enable the controller, and then navigate back to the platform view to begin the cooldown. Press the cooldown button to bring up the options for customizing the cooldown. This screen shows the current value of each setting. The system remembers the values used in the most recent cooldown. To review or change these settings, press Customize Cooldown. The cooldown process will begin by checking your system for vacuum leaks while establishing a rough vacuum level that is needed for effective crowd pumping. During the process of establishing a rough vacuum on the sample chamber, you can also enable the platform bakeout or dry nitrogen purge procedures to help clean out your system before beginning crowd pumping. These steps are especially helpful if you've had the sample chamber open for an extended period or if you plan to keep the system cold for a long period of time. The platform bakeout uses a thermal vacuum bakeout procedure that applies heat to the cryo pumping surfaces while running the vacuum pump to help desorb and pump out contaminants such as water vapor. After enabling, you can adjust the bakeout temperature and duration as desired. Just be careful here if you are using materials such as grease to mount your sample, as the bakeout can cause grease to run into places that you don't want it. The bakeout timer starts once stage one, stage two, and the platform have all reached the target temperature. These surfaces are then held at the bakeout temperature for the duration of the bakeout. When enabled, the dry nitrogen purge process will repeatedly pump down and refill the sample chamber with dry nitrogen to help draw contaminants out of the sample chamber. You can set this process to repeat as many times as you'd like. If you don't have dry nitrogen connected to your system, then dry nitrogen purging will be skipped even if it is enabled. When you are ready, navigate back and press cool down to begin. I'm using a short bake out to demonstrate the bake out process. Press cool down to get started. As mentioned earlier, the first part of the cool down will check your system for vacuum leaks. If any leaks are detected, the cool down will be aborted. You will know that all leak checks have passed after the system status no longer says checking for leaks. The overview screen is the place to go if you want to watch the pull vacuum process in more detail.
The bake out completed and the system is now purging with dry nitrogen. After establishing a good vacuum level and finishing the bake out and dry nitrogen purging, the cryo cooler will turn on and the system will begin to cool to the target temperature. The temperature graphs are also a good way to monitor the progress of the cool down. The system is now cold and the ATSM has reached the target temperature. Press the ATSM temperature channel to return to the ATSM temperature controls. The temperature stability of the ATSM is displayed in the center of the screen along with the heater power being applied to maintain that temperature. The temperature stability will turn green when the temperature is stabilized at the target temperature. The threshold used to determine whether the temperature is stabilized can be customized in the instrument settings. You can change the ATSM target temperature to move the different temperatures in the temperature range. Watch the stability turn green as the temperature locks in on the target. To let the sample go to the lowest base temperature, you can either set the target to zero, or disable the controller. You can also apply direct heater power manually. Back on the platform operate view, you can press stop or warm up at any time during the cooldown. To warm up as quickly as possible, use the warm up button to actively warm the system using the heaters on stage 1, stage 2, and the platform. The vacuum space will be left valved off at the end of the warm up process to keep your sample chamber vacuum space as clean as possible. Pressing stop will turn off the cryo cooler and allow the system to warm up naturally, leaving the vacuum space valved off. To help speed up the warm up, you can also set your ATSM temperature to a warm temperature. After the system is warm and when you are ready to exchange your sample, use the vent button to vent the sample space and break vacuum. If dry nitrogen is connected to the system, dry nitrogen will be used for a few minutes to push contaminants out of the vacuum space and to recharge the charcoal absorbers. If you plan to do a quick sample exchange, you can also choose to vent continuously with dry nitrogen until you hit stop.
This allows you to maintain a positive outflow of dry nitrogen gas while working in your sample space to further reduce contamination while the lid is off the sample chamber. Press vent to begin the process. The vacuum pump will pump out the vacuum lines at the beginning of the process in case the vacuum lines leaked at all while the chamber was cold. When the vent valve is open and nitrogen is flowing, you will see this indicated in the main status area. Press stop to close the vent valve. If you won't be using the system immediately to do another cool down, it is recommended to use the pull vacuum button to bring your sample chamber back under vacuum for storage. This will help keep water vapor and contaminants out of your system, helping ensure an efficient, effective cool down the next time you use your system. The pull vacuum procedure uses the same options as your last cool down. Set a target pressure to pump down to before turning off the vacuum pump and valving off the sample chamber. If you set a lower target pressure than the roughing pump is capable of achieving, then the pull vacuum process will run indefinitely until stopped manually. This can be useful for using your sample chamber as a sample storage area when not in use. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to cool down and warm up your system using our Gen 3 CryoStation user interface. See you next time!